Hey folks, Corey from TheOverShield.com here, doing another Overshield interviews, but in video this time, and I'm here with the very one and only Mr. Kyle Hebert. Kyle. Hey, thank you so much for having me, man. It's, I'm having a great time here at NACACON 2013. I don't not want to see an angry Kyle. That'd be bad. That'd be really bad. But I'm a teddy bear. I can do this. I'm good. You're just you're just, you're a funny teddy bear is what you are, man. Yay. <laughs> now, for those who don't know what Kyle does, he is most famously known as the narrator of Dragon Ball Z and voice of Teen Gohan. And for those who some most a lot of people don't know, but he is the voice of Ryu in Street Fighter. So, um, I know you get asked this a lot, because, but it's kind of like the stereotypical question our viewers should know. How exactly did you get started as a voice actor? I have an atypical answer because I didn't come from the stage or on camera. I came from the radio. So, I went from one booth to another, but the headphones stayed on. I've always wanted to be a DJ on the radio, and then that transitioned into voice work at Funimation. Uh, I heard about voice work uh, an audition for DBZ, and then... Sorry, a panel let out. But anyway, so yeah, uh, I, I heard about open auditions for Dragon Ball Z back in 2000. And uh, my radio station found out that the open auditions were happening. I went in, got lucky, tried out. And uh, within a couple of months of doing bit parts, I was granted the role of uh, Teen Gohan. And a couple months after that, I took over the narrator role. Uh, quick question. There's always been a rumor around uh, the fact that a lot of the voice actors just simply passed out from uh, of just screaming and the booze and everything, did you? Almost. I think Eric Vale and Justin Cook, I think they actually did. I felt lightheaded. I had to do five Kamehamehas in one episode, and I almost just, I almost keeled over. The hair, the, all, that, all the air left my body and was not coming back in, because when you record in these booths, they're pretty small, and you can't have the AC on because the mic will pick it up. So the, there's like you just have the, the crappy so circulated air. So you're stuck in a hot box. You basically are, yeah. And uh, you sweat like a pig, and it's just not pretty. Now, for like as, as we said earlier, you are the voice of Ryu. Um, is, I, I assume that's did you since um, since there's been new f iterations of Street Fighter. Were you also the voice of Evil Ryu, Nega Ryu? I can't remember the when his actual name. Evil Ryu, yeah. I thought he was Dark Ryu, but they called him Evil Ryu in Super Street Fighter, yeah. Uh, and uh, the really cool thing is Disney wanted to use the actual voices, so when they made Wreck-It Ralph, they actually called me in, and I got to do a couple of lines on Wreck-It Ralph. Dude, that's awesome. Um, where would you see yourself if you were not a voice actor? I'd be trying to be a voice actor, honestly, because I love doing this. I'm very passionate about it. I can play drums, and I miss playing drums, but I don't think I have the, the, the aptitude and the patience and the discipline to be in a band. As much as I love music, I love playing and everything, um, I'd probably still be trying to achieve my goals in voice work. Now, earlier in a panel that I attended, you said that you really, really want to um, do an American cartoon, say, like with Futurama with like Billy West and Joe DiMaggio. Um, now, I, I, now, why is that exactly? I think uh, the, uh, you have the whole vibe of recording with a cast, like an old radio play. you got all these veteran actors alongside you, and you're building a radio play, essentially, before the animation's done. It's pure audio. And getting to improvise and watching other people perform, and you perform you know, off of their performance. And I, I've done a little stuff of that, a little bit of that, in uh, Avengers Earth Mightiest Heroes. I was Super Scroll and a couple of incidental characters on that. And once I got to be on a major cartoon like that for a couple episodes, I'm like, this is everything I wanted it to be, and now I want it even more. So I, li I liken what I do for a living as like drug addiction, because <laughs> when I don't work, it's like withdrawal. And when I get to work, it's like I'm on the high again. I get to, I get to have fun and build characters with just my voice and work with a super cool talent pool in Los Angeles, and I'm very, very blessed to do what I do. Dude, as someone who tried to be a voice actor, but like, I, I when I was when I mean try, I tried abridging, which was very different. I know you were also the voice of Eisen. I tried to be a voice of Eisen, though, as I said earlier at your panel, I tried to make him fabulous. <laughs> and for example, like this is we, we since it was a parody, we were we were we had a super ambitious goal. I'm not even sure if the project is even finished right now. I don't even know what its current state is, but we tried to do the whole Eisen arc in one shot. 
So needless to say, it was really over ambitious, but it was so much fun to do because uh, the fight with Ichigo, I, that was mostly because of the fact it's just like, ah, I win because you looked at my sword. It's just like, I, it's, it's like no, no, I, I know I didn't. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> oh no, you didn't. Oh yes, I did. <laughs> totally. But so I want you to describe to our viewers because um, a lot of people who watch my site do not know what is the big difference between video game voice acting and anime voice acting and okay well first of all the similarities we record solo the cartoon is the only time where you have the, all the actors together in one session uh, for because of the technical constraints of doing lip sync anime requires the actor to be there one at a time uh, because you know we have to focus on the lip sync and all that so we and if we have more than one character then we have to uh, do them one character at a time. But we try to do a DVD's worth in a couple of sessions or one session, depending on how many lines we have. And then we're, uh, we're, we're done until they call us next time. Next time. <laughs> but yeah, 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 the, the, let's see, what else? The, you wanted the, the differences between video games and, uh, yeah. What we have in video games is the animation or the cutscenes are rarely ever done, or if they are, it's super rough. So we see animatics, maybe. Or it's uh, like an import from Japan. Yeah, yeah. And what we, what we have instead, instead of matching lip sync, we're matching the length of the Japanese audio. So what we'll have to do is listen to it first to preview it. The script will be broken down into multiple columns. Like, this line has to be three seconds long. It can't be four. It can't be five. It can't be two. It's got to be three. So we do our best to make it fit those constraints because the character's animation will be done to the Japanese audio. And we, we're, we, since we don't have the raw materials or the video to go on, we have to just hope that the lip sync will look somewhat decent. That it's not three frames off and you have to do it all over again. Right, right. Like, we only saw animatics for the Super Street Fighter or the Street Fighter 4 cutscenes, so that's why the lip sync is so bad. We weren't given the materials, unfortunately. Or they were being worked on at the same time concurrently. So, we no, did the best we could. Unfortunately, Super Street Fighter 4, that was just, they got lazy and just did animated panels. So, <laughs> so that, that made it a little bit easier for you, didn't it? <laughs> well, I mean, we had some more work to do, like the Evil Ryu stuff, or, uh, yeah. I'm, you, know, you mean DLC Ryu? Or DLC, yeah, exactly. Um, so, I want you to, can you describe what your favorite role was that you've done in your career? Uh, I will say I can't limit it to one, because if you go back to the beginning, Dragon Ball Z opened up all the doors for me. It was my first show. I started as a fan. I started as an eight-year-old boy wanting to get into animation voice work, and then here I was 20, 30, you know, 25 years later getting to voice on something I was a fan of. And then and I was already doing something I was a fan of, which was being a DJ, and then I got that out of my system, and that transitioned into voice work. So DBZ was very instrumental in starting my career. Uh, being Ryu, of course, has been very impactful in my life for being an iconic Street Fighter you know, game character. It's been known for 25 years. And, um, and that being led to getting onto Wreck-It Ralph, so which is a huge personal achievement for me because I've you know, loved cartoon movies, and that was a great film. And I, I feel, even in the smallest way, I feel so blessed to, to be able to, to say, hey, they didn't hire a celebrity. They actually came to me, and I got to be on it. So obviously your favorite role is not the giant toad from Devil May Cry 4. No, but I, I, I will tell you that I, I could give you like the, the, not sarcastic, but a general answer. Like, what's your favorite role? I say the next one. Because, again, it's, it's that high that I want to achieve in my drug addiction of voiceover work. I want to always work. When I'm working, I'm happy. When I'm not, I'm depressed and sad. But I'm auditioning constantly. You audition more than you work in this field. It's very stressful. And there's a lot of times where you wonder, how am I going to pay rent this month? And then suddenly when you think, oh, my God, I'm going to give up, suddenly the phone call, the phone rings. And it's like, hey, you're hired. We love your audition. It could be months after you've tried out for a part. And sometimes, if you're really lucky and established, they'll just cast you. That happened on Full Metal Alchemist with my character, the captain on Yu Yu Hakusho. I've worked on countless games, just doing bit parts, you know, here and there. And they said, we know you can do this because you've got a wide range of voices. Let's just bring Kyle in. It's like, all right, thank you. That's awesome. That saves me one step. I don't have to audition and wait. I, get, I just get the call and it's like, hi, we need to schedule you Monday, 9 to 11. It's like, I'm there. Now, um, one question I have, and I'm really a question was like, um, 
What piece of advice would you give to those who are aspiring to be voice actors or just those who are an acting in general? Yeah. Uh, voice acting is one piece of acting. All, it's all acting. And uh, voice acting does emphasize the acting. Don't put it on voices. Don't say to yourself, I can do impressions. I can do a great Vegeta. That's not going to get you anywhere. Those roles are cast. You have to bring yourself to the table and say, here's my acting chops. And how do you do that? You take your classes and train just like anybody. If you want to be a doctor, you go to medical school. You want to be an actor? To get experience. How do you get experience? Sign up for classes, workshops. Get experience and talk to your fellow friends who might know some acting classes, some acting coaches. Uh, get involved. And you can do that in any city. But the voice work, if you want to do specifically anime, cartoons, video games, the really cool gigs, you got to be in L.A. But if you want to do radio, TV commercials, that's a very lucrative form of income for many voice talent. You can be in any major city for that. New York's great for that. Dallas, Chicago, L.A., Orlando, all that, cool, all that sort of stuff. But so, so nowhere near here. Well, no. Yeah, I mean, anywhere that has a university has a chance to, to for some sort of acting. You know, dinner theater, community theater, whatever it is. Uh, it's all valid. And you say to yourself, but it's not voice work, it's like, but it's acting. And that is the crucial, crucial thing. You need to bring your A game when you have a chance to audition because you're gonna. it's very competitive. You're reading against people who have been established for 20, 30 years. And how are you going to penetrate that little inner circle of constantly working people and make a name for yourself? Yeah, I, I agree. It's kind of hard for you to compete with, say, with like myself to go and compete. Oh, you know, what? I'm going to go audition for a role that Steve Blum is also going for as well. Right. And the beautiful thing is, I mean, even though it's competitive, there's a lot of work to be had. There's a lot of chances. And the important thing is I tell people when you audition for something, don't say to yourself, I got to land this role. Say to yourself, I'm going to do the best I can so I make a great first impression and that these people like my like my audition so much that they call me in to read for other parts and other projects in the future that's worth its weight in gold so don't say to yourself i'm going to get this role because i did a kick-ass audition chances are you're not going to get it but if you can impress the people with your acting chops the fact that you take direction you got good cold reading skills you can improvise and do this big juggling act in the booth it's like hey look i can do what these guys do hire me they just might or they at the very least We'll call you in. It's all a competition. It is a competition, but, you know, uh, I, I wouldn't trade it for the world because, uh, for me, it's, it's, it's literally making a childhood dream come true. And I'm living my dream, and I've, got a long, I've come a long way, but i got a long way to go. So now it's like, well, Kyle, you've been in a Disney movie. You can retire. Like, no, that's not true. I did two lines, <laughs> two little lines. I want to do so much more. I want to have a lead role on something. And, like, that could take – Decades. I don't care. It'll take as long as it takes. I'm dedicated to it. I'm not giving up. I completely understand. It's not like you can go and retire after saying, hey, Ken, let's go grab some brewskis. <laughs> let's go to Tappers, Ken. What do you say? Sure you can. Now, recently it's been unveiled that and it's said that a new Dragon Ball Z movie is coming out, and there's been lots and lots of rumors about Funimation being involved and possibly doing an English dub. If you know anything, can you actually give us any sort of info? No, but I will tell you I know nothing about it going on. I know that it's opening in IMAX in Japan, and I know that if it gets licensed, it would sell like hotcakes. So, I mean, I hope it happens. I know Gohan has something to do in it. Yeah, Teen Gohan's there, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, any chance to, you know, brand new animation in Dragon Ball, this this old franchise with new material i mean we're all chomping at the bit to do it so i really sincerely hope that we get to because well, i know that just like in the past few years there have been two dragon ball specials that have come out yo's son goku and his friends return and then the bardock special were you kind of bummed that just like funimation kind of passed that up yeah i don't know if there was legal issues with that but uh, i mean there's a shonen jump special from like five or six years ago they haven't jumped on that either it's like we had vegeta's brother in it and all that stuff it's like that was brand new, but it's still not licensed. So, now, question: You were starting a video called "Kyle Bear is an Asshole" with a nostalgia critic, where you followed him around and tortured him, narrating everything. He killed you. Why are you here? Ah, uh, the power of Shenlong, man. It's strong. I think Vic Manana got the Dragon Balls together and brought you back. Is what happened. Oh, okay. 
All right, I'll, I'll take it. I'll go with that. That's good. That's good. But yeah, I'm going to see Doug Walker. That was his idea for the skit. He said, just improvise. Just, just do the narrator and taunt me in this skit. We're going to be at a con in uh, Leicester, UK in the September, and uh, I'm going to hit him up and say, hey, let's do a sequel. I don't have any ideas other than bring me back. Do you, the Dragon Balls wish me back or something, and we could just do it all over again. You can taunt him at his panels and everything all over again. Yeah. All over again. Yes. Now, final question. Kyle, what is your favorite color? Blue. No, yellow. Ah! Thus, he was killed by the troll of the bridge. Anyways, folks, that has been an Overshield interview. Kyle, would you like to leave a parting message for our viewers? Absolutely. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for checking out uh, all the voice acting. We, we love what we do. We love that you guys love what we do. So hope to see you on the con circuit sometime in the future. All right? Shake hands. Kiss babies. Sign autographs. We're very, very grateful for, for uh, all your support through the years. Thank you very much. Kyle, this has been an absolute pleasure for me as someone who grew up with Dragon Ball Z, as you can tell with the pens and everything. I love Dragon Ball Z. So to meet you was an honor. So thank you so much for this interview. Thank you so much. See you, folks.